What happens to a latex balloon when it is squeezed? One part shrinks as other areas expand. This idea has been applied to the geopolitics of cocaine and other drugs for a long time. When the government puts pressure in a region to stop the cultivation of illegal drugs, the result is simply that the cultivation moves somewhere else. This is a map of the coca growing regions in Colombia in the year 2004, when the most important efforts to eradicate coca took off. Notice how the crops are concentrated in two regions. First, the region between Nariño and Caquetá. Second, the plains between Meta and Guaviare. This is the same map two years later. The crops left the traditional regions of cultivation and expanded like a cancer to the rest of the country. New regions, like the north of Antioquia and the west of Nariño, were planted with coca. Following the coca, there was an increase in violence in this region. The balloon effect is not only present within countries, but also among them. In this graph, we can see the net coca cultivation in two countries, Peru in blue and Colombia in red. On the top, in black, are the total hectares of coca crops in the Andean region. Notice how the black line remains relatively stable. In the meantime, there is a shift in the cultivation of coca from Peru to Colombia. This shift obeys to the efforts of Peru's president Alberto Fujimori to reduce coca cultivation between 1990 and 2000. The pressure in Peru moved the cultivation of coca to Colombia. The balloon effect is not only present in the production of the drug, it is also evident in the routes used to smuggle it. This map shows the routes used by cocaine dealers in 1998. The consumption in the United States was 267 metric tons a year. Most of that drug was entering the country through the Caribbean and the Pacific Ocean. During those years, the United States implemented a plan to reduce the smuggling of cocaine by sea. This is the same map for 2008. The sea routes were replaced by land routes through Mexico. The increased cocaine trade through the country fueled an increase in violence. In 1998, Europe was consuming 63 tons of cocaine. By 2008, this number increased to 124 tons, a twofold increase. New routes were opened. Africa, that up to that point had nothing to do with the cocaine trade, became an important route to Europe. Pressure in the sea routes going to the United States made drug dealers find new routes and new customers. Here we arrive to an important conclusion. The balloon effect not only exists in the supply side or in the routes used by drug dealers, but also on the consumption side of the trade. Drug dealers, when they cannot reach their best customers, simply turn to their second best. In this case, the Europeans. This graph shows the value of the United States cocaine market. It starts at $133 billion in 1988. This steadily decreases to $35 billion 20 years later. This graph taken alone could be, could be somehow encouraging. However, if we see the same graph for the European market, we see that the overall situation is very grim. It starts low in 1998 with $13 billion and it grows steadily to $34 billion by 2008. The growth in the European market offsets, at least partially, the reduced consumption in the American market. Taking the balloon effect and historical precedent into consideration, the best Colombians can hope for in this war on drugs is that President Santos can apply enough pressure in the country so that cocaine production goes back to Peru. This pressure could also carry the coca crops to any other neighboring country, carrying with it its trace of blood, destruction and death.